this is probably like the like fifth time I've tried to do this. Crap keeps happening. That makes me have to give up in the middle of it. Basically, I think Ayn Rand gives a false dichotomy when it comes to altruism and egoism. She sort of has this idea that whatever, this thing she calls altruism is really popular and that like all of society, or most of society, is all about it. And it's just the way things are done. And they're like, academic philosophers in general just love this stuff. Right? And she defi her definition of, of altruism is of this something that, this thing that's just so absurd, you know, that like, like who would actually follow it? And um, as a disclaimer, on altruism and egoism, on her definition of altruism, if someone were actually to be an altruist, by Ayn Rand's definition, I'd be virulently against them. If you really believe that you should have no selfish drives, that you should never be selfish at all, you know, that you should always be self-sacrificing, that your whole life should be dedicated to others, and that's it. Like, you should not have any desire for your own happiness, and you should have no selfish drives at all, and you should never indulge in selfishness. I would completely disagree with you. I think you would be. I think you would be silly. And I'm not just going to make an assertion. Um, I would disagree with you because it seems to me that your goal is to increase happiness in others. But what what would really seem to overall increase happiness is that e each person were to have the common what's what's known as a common sense view on interest, which I think is really the majority opinion. The, the common sense view is that we should tr care for other people and try to help other people when they get a chance because this helps society and we're in society but what really increase happiness I think overall is if each of us looks out for our own happiness and each of us is sort of in charge of trying to help ourselves become happy so if you really want to create happiness you should do the I think you should this common sense view of I, I'll try to selfishly keep myself happy while helping out other people's once in a while is much better than the idea that you should always self-sacrifice and that you should never be selfish. That you should be some kind of, you know, Jesus Christos kind of guy. See what I did there? Yeah, you might not have catched it. If you're not suave enough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway, with egoism, I like some of it. I, I kind of get the point, but do you get my idea? Ayn Rand's ethics, Ayn Rand's egoism is just virtue ethics rehashed and justified based on self-interest. So it's not really as... Ayn Rand's ethical egoism is not as crazy as it sounds. It's just virtue ethics plus self-interest. So it's not, not, a, not a big deal, really. But yeah, my main point, though, is that this extreme view of altruism is not in the majority, and she sort of gives you this false dichotomy of either you're just a crazy objectivist, uh, altruist, you have to be at this insane level of altruist, or your other alternative is ethical egoism. And her, like, the way she defines altruism is such to where you really have to be a little silly to be an uh, altruist, because she de describes it as so absurdly that, only, that literally any theory by comparison sounds good. And uh, uh, there's a book I'm going to put in the description that you read Moral Issues that had like a little section about this same argument about this the false economy. It is uh, Rachel's. There's two Rachel's. I forget their their first names. The the father son team. Well, the father started the book and then the son kept it going. And they're both like super geniuses, whatever. And they mentioned this in their ethical egoism ethical egoism section. So yeah, that that's that's basically it. It's a little it's a bit fishy, you know. It doesn't really seem to catch the situation of what's going on in the world. Alright, done with this video. Now for um, part two.